good evening uh, today we will discuss about si net si nets originated from enterochromaffin cells located at the base of the intestinal crypts in the submucosa more than two third of si nets are in the terminal ileum within 60 cm of ileocecal valve and its distributions are at the duodenum present in 2% cases at jejunum in 7% cases and commonest site is ileum in 89% cases Patients with SI nets frequently experience clinical symptoms and it metastasizes to distant locations more often than other types of nets. Duodenal and jejunal ileal nets are biologically and clinically distinct, so we will learn duodenal as well as jejunal ileal nets separately. Incidence for duodenal nets is in the range of 2 to 3 percent of all GI nets. Duodenal nets occur in the six decades of life, preferably in male. Most of the duodenal nets are solitary, small lesion limited to the duodenal mucosa and submucosa. The majority remain silent and are diagnosed incidentally during routine investigation. At the time of diagnosis, 40 to 60 percent of DNAs are already metastatic to regional lymph nodes and 10 percent to the liver. All patients with DNET should be checked for fasting serum casting, serum GCGA, and a screen for MAN1 syndrome. Five types of DNETs are found gastrinoma, somatostatinoma, gangliocytic paraganglioma, non functioning DNET, and duodenal neuroendocrine. Gastrinoma is a subcentimeter and multiple tumor originating from G cells in the submucosal layer of proximal duodenum and secrete excessive gastrin. They account for about 10% of all DNATs. They are most common functional DNAT followed by somatostatinoma. More than 80% of gastrinoma arises in the gastrinoma triangle and duodenal wall gastrinoma is seen in 40 to 50% of all gastrinoma. They are the most common causes of they are most common cause of Jollinger Allison syndrome. Incidence for duodenal nets is in the range of 2 to 3 percent of all GI nets. Duodenal nets occur in the six decades of life, preferably in male. Most of the duodenal nets at the time of diagnosis, 40 to 60 percent of DNAs are already metastatic to regional lymph nodes and 10 percent to the liver. All patients with DNAT should be checked for fasting serum gastrin, serum GCGA, and a screen for MAN1 syndrome. Five types of DNATs are found. For treating non-metastatic lesions, surgical resection or inucleation of the tumor without pancreatic duodenectomy is considered. In patients with hepatic metastasis, hormonal therapy with octetide, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hepatic embolization alone or with chemoembolization, cytoreduction surgery and liver transplantation can be considered. Somatostatinoma originated from the D cells in the ampullary or periampullary region of the duodenum. It secretes excessive amount of somatostatin, as name suggests. They can be a sporadic or a part of MAN1 syndrome or associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. Somatostatinoma are generally solitary, large, malignant tumor, and have metastasized to lymph nodes or the liver at the time of diagnosis because of its silent nature and because most of the time, the patient with somatostatinoma remains. But the other clinical presentation with the somatostatinoma may be a nausea, abdominal pain, weight loss, obstructive jaundice, or rarely somatostatinoma syndrome like presentation, which comprises diabetes mellitus, cholelithiasis, and astatoria. To investigate a patient with somatostatinoma, please go with the endoscopy. Serology of biomarkers, functional somatostatin skin, and histologically diagnosis is confirmed by positive immunohistochemical staining of CGA and synaptophysis. Treatment are endoscopic resection, surgery, somatostatin analog therapy, peptide receptor radio, ligand therapy, chemotherapy, liver targeted therapy, symptomatic treatment, and immunotherapy. <coughs> Next is gangliocytic paraganglioma. It's a very rare duodenal nets. 
It's a present on the second part of duodenum near the ampulla. The tumor mostly exhibits a benign nature except regional lymph node metastasis, which is present in 5 to 7 percent of cases. The tumor size varies from 0 0.5 to 10 centimeters. Gastinoma is a subcentimeter and multiple tumor originating from G cells in the submucosal layer of proximal duodenum and secrete excessive gastrin. They account for about 10% of all DNAs. They are most common functional DNA followed by somatostatinoma. For investigation, again endoscopy and on endoscopy, tumor are isoechoic, CT scan can be performed to find out the soft tissue mass. Histologically, a spindle, epithelioid, and ganglion cells are found in this tumor. For treatment, endoscopic resection or radical excision like pancreaticoduodenectomy, depending on the size, depth of invasion, and lymph node metastasis. Next is non-functioning DNAT. The majority of DNAT are non-functional and are detected during routine endoscopy done for other reasons. Patient may remain asymptomatic or present with obstructive symptoms like nausea, vomiting, or jaundice. For treatment, EMR should be considered for a DNAT which size is less than 2 cm and confined to some mucosa. Transduodenal resection is considered if net invading the muscularis propria and radical surgery is indicated if the size of tumor is more than 2 cm and DNAT with lymph node involvement and all periampulary DNAT. Duodenal necks are ex duodenal necks are extremely rare and very aggressive tumor and it is present on the it present at the proximal to the ampullary region. Patient may present with abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and gastrointestinal bleeding. SI nets originated from introchromaffin cells located at the base of the intestinal crypts in the submucosa. More than two thirds of SI nets are in the terminal allium within 60 cm of ileocecal valve, and its distributions are at the duodenum present in 2% cases, at jejunum in 7% cases, and commonest site is ileum in 89% cases. After duodenal, uh, we will learn about jejunal ileal nets. Its incidence is 23 to 28% of all GI nets. Most of the jejunal ileal are non functioning. The mean age of diagnosis is 6th or 7th decade of life with no sex predilection. The GI nets are generally more than 2 cm size and consist of multiple tumors in up to 40% of cases. At the time of diagnosis, 70% of them have metastasis regardless of tumor size. Sometimes you may get questions that why a patient with jejunal ileal nets present with intestinal obstruction or mesenteric ischemia. So my dear students, because of fibrosis around the metastatic lymph node leads to the mesenteric contraction and that will cause it thinking of the small bowel and which subsequently leads to the intestinal obstruction. Similarly, mesenteric fibrosis of mesenteric blood vessels giving rise to mesenteric ischemia in about 10% of affected patients. And because of desmoplastic reaction, patient may develop dictoperitoneal fibrosis, obstructive uropathy, and hydronephrosis. Clinical presentation of jejunal ileal nets are patient usually remain asymptomatic, but some patient may present with abdominal pain, intestinal obstruction, gastrointestinal bleeding, and decreased urination. Radiologically, mesentic fibrosis appears as a mesentic mass with linear soft tissue obesity and possible calcification radiating outwards in a wheel spot pattern. For a diagnosis, we can measure our biomarkers including serum CGA, serum NSE, and urinary 5 hydroxytoacetic acid. We can also perform diagnostic endoscopy and diagnostic imaging. For a treatment, surgical resection of primary net with a regional lymphadenectomy, even in the presence of hepatic metastasis, is recommended. 
there is no role of chemotherapy in well differentiated jejunoidal neuroendocrine neoplasia combination chemotherapy like a capsitabine and temozolamide for metastatic poorly differentiated tumor hepatic metastasis can be treated by octreotide therapy transarterial embolization with microparticles radiotherapy and radio frequency ablation the 5 year survival rate is 60% in non metastatic disease but becomes 80 18% when metastasis to the liver